to start, I'm going to paint it all over. And then I'm going to put wallpaper on the front and the inside of the cabinet using some paper that I designed and had printed myself. Prep is key. Can I just say, because I know there's probably people watching this crying because I'm going to be painting this, because I, you'll be seeing the wood that's coming through and the lovely grain. I'm not ruining it. I'm just saying I'm not ruining it. I mean, art is in it. I have a lot of customers actually come to me and say, look, I've got this piece that I don't want to get rid of. My nan left it to me. It doesn't really fit my house or my design ideas at the moment. It just feels nice to work on. It's nice to know it's got a bit of, bit of a story. And you often wonder what it's seen. I just want to check this is dark enough. I might have to add a little tiny bit of black. OK. That first coat of paint does give you that feeling like it's starting to take shape. Because no one likes prepping. But I can guarantee you that small amount of prep really does make your piece that professional looking finish that you, you wanted to achieve and you had in your head at the beginning. You know what you should do is always make sure if you've mixed paint that you have enough to do it. And I don't. <laughs> so I've literally got to colour match it. So the main issue of running out of paint is you'll see a difference when they dry if you don't match it exactly when you remix. I should just measure. That's what you should really do. But I never do. I live on the edge. I'm upcycling a piece of furniture for my kitchen. It was given to me by a lovely lady called Maria. This is incredibly well made. Her granddad Ray made it, so it would be really nice if I could get the shade of paint right. I think it is a tiny bit bluer. But I'm going to carry on and then mix it a bit darker for the second coat. Or whatever I mix with the second coat, that's what it's going to be, the end. So this is the paper I'm going in with. Oh, look at that. <gasps> See? Transformation appearing. Mike, can I have a hot chocolate? A man of few words, my husband, but he does make a mean hot chocolate. And it's halfway through, you sit back and admire your work so far. It's an actual addiction for me. When I first had the feeling of, wow, look what I've done, I bought a little two-drawer chest about five years ago. It still wells me now. The next step is the detail of the handles. It's time for one of my favourite little tricks. I'm going to prep now all the hardware that I took off. It's a bit tarnished and aged, so I'm just going to take a nail buffer, actually. It's very soft, it's not too rough. It's not like a strong nail file or a piece of sandpaper. It's very soft. And I'm just going to lightly buff over. That's the old one, and there's the part where I've just started to buff off. It really just takes off all that dirt, grime and build-up of years of use without damaging anything either. And it means we can keep on its originality. There's a, something about that cabinet now that's still in its original form, which is like the brassware that Ray put on all those years ago. Look at that. I think Ray would be really impressed with this. I thought it'd be a nice idea to write when Ray built this on the back and when I upcycled it. And um, because anyone who has this further down the line, it would be nice they might want to know about when Ray built it. Okay, something like that. It's just a short drive to my flat, and with a bit of effort from the family, we managed to get it into position in the kitchen. Nice. I feel I've managed to keep just enough of the original features, so Maria, the previous owner, will be proud her granddad's work lives on. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Maria. Now, I know you wanted um, a picture. 
But I'm doing one better. I want you to see it right now. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna flip it round. I'm getting quite tearful. Yeah, I really enjoyed it and it looks amazing. And thank you. See you later. Cute. Got really emotional. Where did that come from? She was so happy with it. That makes you feel really nice. I think I would have known if she didn't like it. Like, I really felt that she loved it. So, yeah, I'm really pleased. You can use any mirror for this. I personally think old mirrors are the best. Then using a hot glue gun, you fix the toys around the edge however you like. And because the glue gun won't hold strong enough onto this, I'm gonna use a double contact adhesive and put fabric on here and then glue gun the toys. Because it won't be seen in the end, almost any fabric will do. All I'm going to do here is put strips on, just cut strips and use a double contact adhesive, which is really strong, like something you would use for gluing down um, carpets or heavy fabric and stuff. So for a double contact to work, it, you have to do what it says, double contact. So a spray onto the base, oh, and a spray onto the fabric, and it's really strong. My hand's already sticky and I can't bear it. I've got this thing about sticky hands. <laughs> we'll cover that in another episode. <laughs> this mirror, I think, came from a house clearance. I don't think even a charity shop would take in such a damaged piece. Um, so you'd probably find one at a boot sale. And you'd probably get it for a couple of quid because People would want to, like, don't think that anyone would want to buy it, but this is the sort of stuff I go for. The worse state, the better. With the fabric all on, it's time to grab all your old toys and junk and get sticking. I mean, that's retro. Look, that's my day. That's going in. Battenberg cake going in. <laughs> Everyone had this snake. You got these in Margate, you know, when you went to the coach trip that your dad had organised through his local pub. Loved it. So I'm going to start by just resting a few of the bigger pieces just to get an idea of where I like the position. And then once I've started to glue on the larger pieces, I'm going to go a bit smaller, a bit smaller, sort of build it up. You can really get lost in this part. It's as simple as putting a bit of hot glue on the back and holding it till it sets. Be careful, though, not to burn yourself. That one first. Okay. This is extremely satisfying, knowing that all of this plastic was saved from landfill. Plus, you're getting something really good out of it. Something really beautiful, useful, and looks completely different. So, back at home, it's time to see if my daughter Charlie actually likes it. Oh, wow. That's cool. Do you like it? I love it. You are going to love looking at this. Very Ted friendly. Look, we've got lion, we've got pigs, we've got tigers. I am very pleased with it. It's perfect. 